Folding and hammering of iron is most important in sword making. Fire is fueled by a special type of pine charcoal. The temperature of the fire is determined by the volume of the charcoal and pumped in air. shaped to a short strip formed by two superimposed pieces of different grades of steel. The billet thus formed is folded onto itself, again furnished, and then hammered out to its original length. This process is repeated dozens of times while the temperature of the material is about 800 degrees centigrade. By doing so, slag is removed. The material is now pure steel. Therefore, the resulting bar has a comparatively soft metal core enclosed in and covered by hard steel. The Japanese sword is thus very flexible, yet not likely to snap from a hard blow. During the process, about 10 to 60 kilograms of pine charcoal is consumed. Clay is then drawn on the blade close to the edge using straight and irregular strips of copper. These will form waves of beautiful lines on the blade after tempering. Pine charcoal is used again for the tempering process. They are cut into even sizes and laid out carefully in the furnace so that the temperature of the fire is even throughout. Straw is placed on top of the charcoal for the purpose of adjusting the temperature and the volume of carbon.
For cooling, the temperature of the water is about 2 to 3 degrees centigrade. This process is the most critical and important operation of all as it determines the quality of the blade. The steel which composes the blade is obtained from magnetic ore and sand. Tatada, or the technique of producing steel from these materials, dates back to about 500 A.D. in Japan. The name Tatara is derived from the Tatara tribe, which crossed over to the western part of Japan from the Chinese continent many years ago. It was this tribe which first introduced the technique of producing steel. In recent years, this Tatara technique has all but disappeared due to the lack of young apprentices. After seven and a half hours, the furnace is broken down and the iron ore is obtained. then polished. The name of the swordsmith is inscribed on the tang of a blade. It certifies the quality of the sword and the work of the swordsmith. Polishing also plays an important role in giving a final artistic touch to the blade. The whole process might entail a labor of some ten days. In polishing, it is very important that the person who sharpens the sword lean his body forward and put the center of gravity of his body at a point where the blade and the polishing stone touch. If he fails to maintain this position, he might instantly cut off his fingers. It is a time of intense concentration. Nine grades of polishing stones are used in this process. First, the tip is sharpened. Then, the flat surface and the top ridge are polished. Final polishing is to bring out the sheen of the steel.
The top ridge is difficult to polish. Thus, for this purpose, a layer of polishing stone is cut into pieces and used. assures a tight fit between the scabbard and the blade. The habaki is usually made of copper, loosely overlaid with gold and silver. function of habaki is that of transmitting the stress of a blow through the guard to the hilt itself, instead of directly onto the comparatively weak retaining peg of bamboo or horn. or the scabbard, is made in two halves, usually of honoki wood. The honoki tree grows in the cold mountainous region of central Japan. Only the core of the wood is used after being dried naturally for one to thirty years, depending on the quality. Only high quality rice glue is used to join the two halves. After being glued, the scabbard is again dried naturally for more than 12 hours. Then, after rough planing,
cream by hand, it is carefully polished with leaves called tokusa and muku. Kamaki or hilt wrapping. The bare wood is normally covered with a single piece of white shark skin. On top of this is wrapped a single length of strong flat silk braid. The silk braid is given double twists at regular intervals. Finally, the braid is fastened on one side of the hilt by a neat flat knot. Tsuba, or guard, is the most important of the fittings. It is generally in the form of a flat disc. A pattern, to be cut out later, is drawn on the disc. The design here comes from the family crest of a lord of the Edo period. It was originally designed some 360 years ago by a guard designer named Matahichi Hayashi. Now it is revived by this guard designer. Makers say if the quality of the iron is good, the inlay of gold will never fall out. They believe that gold is dead, but iron is alive.
It takes a guard maker about a year and a half to produce one guard. Some swordsmiths lead a religious life. This guard maker is one of them. Almost every process in the making of a guard is undertaken with religious ceremony. It reflects the principles of Zen Buddhism. In traditional Japanese art, Nature, in the form of fire, birds, wind, and moon, is an indispensable and underlying theme. a small knife inserted and carried in one side of the scabbard. These knives measure about 7.5 centimeters long and a little over 1.5 centimeters wide. Generally, kozuka are oblong in shape. The commonest variation is the rounding off of the handle. However, the entire outline may be fancifully shaped within the limits of the prescribed oblong. Traditional and decorative sword mounts are inseparable from the beauty and refinement of swords. Nishu Hon Ami is the most well known sword appraiser in Japan. Originally, he was an expert sword polisher. He tells of the traditional order of inspection and of swords themselves. Japanese swords are both weapons and art objects. In dealing with blades, there are rules which one must always observe. First, hold the sword in your left hand and draw it out about four to five centimeters with your right hand. Then, carefully draw the whole blade out and leave the empty scabbard at your side. Point the blade upwards and carefully observe the shape from top to bottom and vice versa. Next, hold the blade in the middle with a soft cloth and examine the tempered edge and pattern. He goes on to talk about the soul of swords. In battle, when a samurai pulls out his sword, he is at once confronted with a matter of life and death. To him, his sword is iron, but alive with the energy of life, and it is this energy which gives him the strength to struggle for life. The samurai's sword is his most precious possession and represents the living soul of the warrior.
This art form, combining the ice-cold purity and self-restraint of metal with the energy and fury of fire, must be preserved by young people and passed on to the next generation. elements of earth, metal, fire, water, and wood, and the skill of the swordsmith are all integral parts in the making of swords. The Japanese sword. In it can be seen the body and soul of the ancient Japanese people.